Hello everyone, welcome to Amy Howard Artist in Residence. My name is Audra Lynch Nene. I am a decorative finisher of Audra Lynch AC for about 26 years now. And tonight we are going to be doing a faux chagrin finish. And if some of you might not know what a chagrin is, it is shark skin or stingray and that's why it's a perfect finish to do a faux because we want to um, be conscientious of our environment and our our animals so this is what my inspiration kind of picture is this is a chagrin box and this is a chagrin table um, so if you remember last month, we did this table. That's what it looked like first. And then we did the linen wrap and we ombre it. And I said we were gonna do the chagrin top. And I actually did the top in a dark brown. If you guys remember, the top was this Windsor brown. I don't know what I was thinking because when I, looked at so this is amy howard's mesh stencil this is the chagrin stencil hi zoe yes and everybody say hi because it's nice i can tell them that you can hear me um hi patricia so these are the mesh stencils if you guys haven't used them they're really spectacular um basically it is a screen or a mesh screen and then the images back in the day this was actually my first job out of college i worked in the silk screen division for a sign company so i should have known that when i was doing the image i would be doing the opposite of what i was thinking um, so if you see this everything that's in white is what's going to be printed for some reason in my mind i was thinking the opposite so I was thinking all those gray things I would be putting on, I wanted to do Venetian, pla Venetian plaster and do a little bit of a texture. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to remedy that because otherwise you'd be doing the opposite. So um, supplies that you'll need, you need the chagrin stencil. You will need the One Step Windsor you still need that because I mixed a glaze for the Sunday nap, which is also Sunday nap. And then you need the glaze, which is glazed over. And then I actually did a blend for the stencil of slow as molasses and the silver lining. I think it's silver lining, right? Just metallic silver, silver. In the chalk art. And that's it. So... Now, if you were going to do this finish, I would start with Sunday nap. Don't do the brown base like I did and do the next step because that's just silly. But I'm gonna show it to you. Um, this is kind of what the final looks like. Um, I kind of did a random, it turned out actually really nice. I'm really happy, I'll, when I'm done, I'll show you the table over there. Um, so let me, move this stuff here and get you guys down so you can see let's see i don't know why it's not coming up on my ipad here oh there we are so so here's the windsor brown and basically i wanted to get it to a light Color. So all I did was I took my one step Sunday nap. I basically just put in my sponge and I just lightly sponged it on. And I took my, I like using these. These are just stain pads. They're great. And just kind of softened it up. And it kind of kept some of the darker spots. 
which was fine for this finish. And it dried off real quick on me. So work in small areas. Well, like I said, you wouldn't even be doing this step. I would just start with Sunday nap and you don't even have to worry about this. But I just wanted to show you, like I said. So let's get that over there. So now let's say you started out with Sunday nap, like you should. Let's get my board here. Um, you'll see on mine, you can see the dark peeking through. Um, you really don't really see that in, in the finish. So what you wanna do first is make a glaze. I made, I mixed um, probably about, I would say three parts Sunday nap to one part Windsor with three parts glazed over. So it's pretty, it's pretty opaque. It's not super glazy. And we're gonna have that to step aside here. And what I did to create the depth, I didn't want to use all glaze. You could, but I actually like, when I'm doing a finish, I like to try to use similar colors. Like, so since I have Sunday nap here, I want that in my glaze. And since my top the, in the stencil, I'm going to use this slow as molasses. So. I wanted that in my glaze as well, if that makes sense. So let's put a little of this in my dish here. And basically what I did, oh, I don't want this one. Let's use a cheesecloth on here. So I work in, in small sections because this dries a little fast. So I'm, I'm lightly putting on this glaze mixture and I'm just taking a very small dab of the Slow as Molasses Chalk Art and I'm randomly doing some darks and lights, if you guys can see that. See? And so you're going to, and the reason I'm using this glaze first is because the chalk art dries really quickly for one. So I'm creating kind of a slip and I actually just like this color. It's a little bit darker since I mixed the, since I mixed the Windsor with the Sunday nap. And you don't have to be too concerned with how it is. There's gonna be a lot going on. So we're not trying for perfection. And I don't know if you notice, I'm doing kind of a figure eight in my glaze. And I want to do kind of a randomness with the pattern, if that makes sense. Can I see comments? Let's see, I'm probably not getting all of this on. Everybody good today? It's freezing here. I'm in Northwest Indiana and we actually had snow yesterday and I swear I just can't get warm today. Let's see. And one thing, if you come back in with your glaze, I don't know if you guys have used a lot of glazing stuff, so you kind of have to let, let it be. If you go back into it, you wind up taking that off. So you wanna just kind of go, kind of feather into what you had, if that makes sense too. So like I said, there's just a little bit on there And it doesn't have to be 
super consistent. If you have some darker, some lighter, it's okay. See, I don't know if you can tell. I'm See, I'm going back in there and I shouldn't be. I could potentially take that off. I feel like I haven't, when I first started the, my decorative career, I was glazing all the time. I don't feel like I glaze quite as much anymore. So. Can you all see how it's got just little bits of random? It's not super consistent, which is what we kind of want here. And with the chalk art on here, it dries pretty quick. So I can go right in and do the stencil. I waited a bit when I did my table which I would do that if I'm doing it for a job. And one thing you'll notice on, if you look at some resource pictures of shagreen, real ones, they tend to have a lighter spot and darker ones like this going down the center. So what I did for that, I just took my, my Sunday nap and just dipped a little kind of in the center. and soften that up. If you feel it needs a little touch up. You know, all of decorative finishing and art is about seeing. Um, also, if you notice some, some real ones, I added, um, oh, you could do it with your sponge too. Um, there's a few lighter spots. So I randomly put those in, kind of soften that up. And the reason that I'm softening this up is because to me it looks more natural than if you just had this blob of color on it, if that makes sense. Is anyone saying comments? I can't tell. Um, so let's do our stencil. So again, these stencils are really awesome. Um, they have a sticky side and then a regular side. And you wanna make sure you save the original um, packaging because it's got a slick surface so you can put it right back onto it. And you do wanna make sure you rinse them out um, fairly quickly. Uh, let's see, I was able to do my whole table with one, one pass before I had to wash it, so. Um, and since I've used it a few times now, the stickiness is a little less. But if you see this stencil, see how it's got the bigger center here? I am going to position that right over my center. Um, now, one thing, too, I did find that this stencil, um, it was a little hard to 
repeat. This didn't quite match up. And I also, for me, for my project, if you notice, this has a little bit more open space. So that means it would print darker. I wanted a little less of that. So that's why I decided to do a little more of a random approach on this one. So I will show you how I did that. Um, you'll also notice on this stencil how it has an edge, which is also what I wanted to avoid. So I have this nifty little tool it's actually a brush. Um, it's super soft. I don't know if you can see it. It's not a sponge. It's an actual very dense brush. It works great. You could also use your, um, what do you call it? Oh gosh, kind of what, a scraper. Well, this is a scraper. This is a, oh my gosh, I'm brain dead. Anyway, not a comb tool. Gee whiz. Anyway, um, like a color shaper you can use that as well so like I said I want to avoid going to well I taped off these edges because I silver leafed them if you were just going over the edge or wrapping over you could do that just as easily with this so isn't this just such a pretty pattern I love this so for my stencil, I decided I wanted to lighten up my, my slow as molasses. So that's why I mixed the silver in with that. And where is my tool here? Should have had another one. Eh. And let's see, I don't want all the glaze in here. I had glaze in here for some reason. Let's take that out. So let's mix just a little bit of, a little bit goes a long way I feel in this method. And I, if I had another thing, I would use it instead of using the same stir. Um, you really don't have to mix it a whole lot because the randomness is actually kind of nice on there. So, so basically, once you have your color in there, you're just going to put it on your brush and you're going to rub it in your stencil. Now, I don't know if you can see it. You can see as it goes into the actual stencil and you can tell if it's missed it. So, see, I'm, I'm leaving a few spots and I'm not being going over to the whole edge on there. So, and then you can also do a little bit lighter versus the heavier, that's how I'm getting a little bit of the shadowy parts, which is nice too. So obviously if you do thicker on there, it's gonna be more opaque. And I like that little bit of variation on here. So. And again, I'm just using a little bit and it doesn't matter if you have some more silver versus the brown. See, it's not quite complete solid, which is what I, I'm intending. If I were to take my tool, which I can show you that, um, you know, you definitely get a harder edge on there. Let's see. I moved it. It's one thing you don't want to do. I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit darker over there. So I'm avoiding that. So let's just rub that in. And I'm not going quite to that edge because I don't want a solid line. 
because like I said, it was a little hard to, to line up. And you can push a little hard in there. You'll see it if, if you were close up. And you're just going to continue doing that over the whole board or piece of furniture. Try to hurry on this one. You can kind of see, even on the screen, that I've got various pressure on here and not just pressure, but um, the amount of material. And in person, because I had the silver, it's actually got a nice little reflective quality. So. So there's that half. And so what I did, because like I said, it was a little hard to to do that, I decided to put the circle back on here. And I didn't wanna do that whole dark part. So, and you can kind of see through where you actually left off. And if you have to, you can lift it up and keep pushing. One nice thing too with, with this, um, since it's on the brush, I went back and did some highlighting or some darkening because we're gonna glaze this one more time. I need a little bit more. So again, this is the slow as molasses with a little bit of silver. You don't have to mix it super great because it doesn't really matter as you're pushing it in the stencil. And if you want to do full coverage, do full coverage. I just liked skipping it a little bit. So you can see the, the darker area, that bigger spot. I like that. So you want to make sure you wash your screen pretty quickly. One thing I also did on here because I wanted it a little softer, I took my sponge and just lightly, well, it's pretty dry now, but if I would have done it a little sooner, I did it yesterday or the day before as it was drying. I kind of just dab it to soften it up a little bit you can kind of see that in this one. Uh, that might be a little too much, but I wanted it a little softer. I feel it looks a little more natural. So, so now for the next part, I wanna make sure that this is dry because this can reactivate with some of the glazing on here. So, so I would wait overnight. This one I did. And like I said, since there's already color on this brush, I can go back 
and darken some areas. And shade it in. And it gives a nice, really soft effect. And I actually did a similar thing as to the first glazing, just a little bit of this. And then the darker color. There's other different glazing methods you can use. And I'm just doing this just very lightly because I wanted to keep that light. So, so again, I'm just putting a little bit of that glaze on there. Ooh, too much. And one nice thing, it's very forgiving. I know I'm kind of quiet today, aren't I? I'm not answering too many things. Let's see. I can't see comments. I don't know why I can't see comments. And of course, I would be taking a little more time and doing it a little bit nicer if I was doing a project, but I'm kind of rushing it, as you can see. But I like the, the difference of the, the shading. And I'm offloading if I feel I have too much on there. I'll get to questions after when I'm looking at it. Glazing definitely takes some practice. I actually, um, I did that tabletop and then I wiped it all off because, like I said, I, I did that all the way to the edge and I didn't like the pattern. So that's when I decided to switch up and do a little bit more of a random randomness to it. So anyway, you guys get the idea on here. If you feel like you need more, you can come back in with a darker color. You can come back in with a lighter color. Um, let's do this guy just a little bit more. And then one thing that I also did too on the table, I felt it needed a little more because one of the samples I saw, it had a little white ones here and there. So I came back in and added that, softened it up, which I feel makes it a little more authentic. Because again, the word faux means to fake. And this is a perfect faux finish. This marble stones, those are true faux finishes versus say some of the decorative finishes that we do. So, 
So that's pretty much the finish. Um, like I said, you could, it's a little choppy, but you could blend that in more. And basically then, I also decided to show you guys, um, I already put my size on my edge because when I show you the table top, I'll show you it's got the, the silver leafed edge on there. Um, so this already has a size. I did that about a half hour ago. And I just wanted to show you how I did it to, there's different ways. On this silver leaf, I don't know if you can see, it's got a little bit of a, a brokenness to there versus putting it on super smooth. And that's what I wanted for this piece because it's definitely a more organic piece. So when I'm doing this type of leafing, once the size is on there and it's ready to go, I just kind of put my, you don't even need the paper. You can just kind of put it on and if it leaves some holes, it's fine. Um, just kind of rub it in. It'll smush it over. So again, you're seeing, can you see that? You're seeing some of the brokenness. Um, and you don't have to be super picky with this one either. When I'm doing projects, say ceilings, I'll collect, I'll put my tarp down on the floor and then I collect all the stuff that's fallen off and I use that as a shabin. So, just rub that in. Now because I, I thought about using gold leaf, but I wanted to keep it kind of cooler since um, since it's a sea animal and it's in the ocean, obviously, I wanted it to be on the cooler side. And I thought the silver looks better for this application rather than, than gold. And you just want to brush it off, clean your edges, and remove your tape. Chagrin is so nice. The lacquer comes out tomorrow, yay! Who's excited about that? Next month, I am doing a Mediterranean Resort lacquered end table. So that's gonna be fun. Make sure you guys tune in for those. Um, and what I did on this, I actually took a little bit of dark wax because I wanted to tone that silver down and kind of blend it in with the top finish. And basically I just, we'll use the same cheesecloth. Basically I just dabbed in my, my dark wax. I don't know if you can see the difference, but it tones it down a bit. There we go. Kind of gives it a yellow, a warm hue to it. It's probably hard to tell in this light. Um, but you're basically just going to rub that in. Uh, can you see the difference there between those two? Kind of, right? It really is hard to tell in this light, but in person, you can definitely tell. And then what I did for the tabletop, I did two coats of the matte sealer first. 
And then I put on just light wax and buffed it. So, yeah, see, so you can see how it glows a little warmer versus the silver. It really gives a nice, a nice look to it. So I'm not gonna show you how to seal it today, but basically you're just gonna use the matte sealer. Just roll it on. I rolled it on with a six inch whiz roller. Um, and if any of you guys are local, I will be having classes for furniture finishes with Amy's products. Um, she's got some other exciting things coming out, which is exciting. I'm not gonna say anything yet. Um, so that's that. That's the shagreen. Isn't that pretty? I love it. So let's see. Ugh. Let me read a couple comments here, hopefully. I know, right? Me too. Gosh, why can't I see comments? Swipe left. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Zoe. Hi, Janice. Bring them on the video. I don't know what that means. Hi, Ethel. Anyway, if you guys like the stuff, make sure you go to my page, Audra Lynch AC. E-T-C-I-E, -E. that's just French for and company. And um, you could go to my website, sign up for a newsletter. I'll keep you guys posted. But um, here's the finish. It looks really nice. Let me show you on the tabletop real quick. If you guys can see it. Um, let's see. I'm not used to uh, moving it around. Oh, uh, we got a glare. Let's see. <laughs> All right, hold on. There we go. That's a little better. Um, the lighting's not great though. So maybe I'll put a picture up and put it in the post. I'm really not good at moving this camera. Sorry guys. Um, Anyhow, so that is faux chagrin finish. And again, don't forget tomorrow is finish Friday with Amy at noon. And next, whatever next, the first Thursday of every month is my day at 7 p.m. So make sure you join in. And again, we're gonna be doing a Mediterranean resort lacquer finish on an end table. So that's exciting. So thank you for joining and I will see you guys next time. Have a great weekend.